is going on, everybody? It is February 10th, Saturday slate. Yeah. We've got six games on the slate, not counting the Pelicans game at 6 o'clock. Um, still going to be pretty interesting with all of the uh, you know trade deadline guys getting integrated. But, you know, take what we can get on this Saturday. We don't really have any other sports going on. Who gives a shit about hockey? Shots fired. Let's just dig into this. Uh, first game up, Magic hosting the Bucks. Bucks, uh, four and a half point favorites in Orlando. Uh, obviously, the Magic are now without Alfred Payton, uh, who we will be talking about in a little bit. But not. Oh, I hate when I don't refresh that first every time too. That's the worst part of it all. Let's take a look at the Magic. Uh, I've got the Magic as the worst possible option. Um, you know, they should be playing at a lower pace. Uh, worst implied total. So I'm not going to love a ton here, but there's obviously some spots where value trumps fit. So first up is Evan Fournier. He's 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. So you're looking for 32 um, he has not hit 32 at all in the past two weeks. And that's every single game without Aaron Gordon. So for right now, I don't have any interest in him. Don't think it's a good fit either. Now, Jonathan Simmons, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. So we'd be looking for 27. Um, he has only done that once, which was the big 48-point outburst uh, against Cleveland. Um, I don't love the idea of taking him here. He's a four for me. Simmers right out of the gate, typing incorrectly. Uh, so he's just a four, but I get why you would want to have him. Augustine is up to 6,200 on FanDuel. You'd be looking for 31. Um, not super interested there. However, he's 4,700 on DraftKings, which is uh, really good. <laughs> So, while I don't love this matchup, like I said, um, 4,700 on DK is kind of wild. He would need uh, 24, like 28, 29, somewhere in that neighborhood to hit 6x, um, which I think is a really realistic scenario for him if he's going to have to play 30 plus minutes. He's actually going to be, I'm actually going to say that he's a 2. Um, he should really open things up for you on DK. I don't really have much interest in Hazonia at 5,500. He is someone that can get there, though. Um, he's a four for me. Um, I'm not super interested in Biombo. He would need 25. Um, he, he feels relatively safe if you think that he's going to get 25 minutes, but I don't see a ton of upside in the number. And then Shelvin Mack, 4,000 on FanDuel, 4,100 on DK. Um, so you're looking for 20 on FanDuel. It's conceivable. I'm going to say that he's a 4. But I don't really want any part of this game outside of uh, Augustine on DK. That's the only legitimately solid play here. Now Milwaukee, on the other hand... I have uh, their middle of the pack in terms of matchup. Uh, you know, Orlando pretty bad on D, so it will be nice to uh, to dig in here. I think that Giannis is in an exceptional spot. You know, granted, back to back, but um, you're looking for you know 55 to 60 from Giannis. 11-5 on FanDuel, 10-8 on DK, but just this matchup alone. Um, I'm, I'm a big, big proponent of Giannis tonight. I would, let's see, Magic Box. So no, 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 no. Dual Durant. Yeah, um, I'm going to say Giannis is a two. I would expect to have him. Uh, Chris Middleton, 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. 38 is a healthy ask for him. Um, not the best matchup in the world. Magic do uh, limit threes. Uh, 
uh, just because of the overall status, I'm going to say that Middleton's a four. Bledsoe, 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. How much did his salary go up? Yeah, who's 6,400 two games ago? He's up $1,600. That's insane. Three straight games in the 40s, however, would have put him at value. Um, seems like Eric Bledsoe is really liking the Jabari Parker era. Uh, again, just a four because of matchup. Um, but I think Giannis is my priority here. Does anything go well with Giannis? Yang Yang, not even typing words. Uh, Zeller, which that's not what we're looking for. Tony Snell is basically the only one that's super positive with him. And uh, I'm going to have a hard time eschewing the virtues of Tony Snell. So I don't think that there's anything else I'm super interested in here. Uh, John Henson, I guess you can say, is a four. And Jabari, I mean, just because of the minutes, it's hard to really look that direction. He could score in bunches and have a great night, but that's a GPP only thing. What a Philly. Uh, Sixers, I have as four-point favorites at home against the Clippers. There's no line right now. The assumption is Embiid plays. Um, I guess we'll hear a little bit more as we go. Um, for right now, he's not out, so I have to assume that he's in. Um... I'm leaning towards the fact that I don't think he'll play, especially because he was a game-time decision yesterday. Feels like more of a, a game that he would sit, which is a shame because I think this is an exceptional matchup for him. Uh, ben Simmons, 8,700 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. Uh, so you're looking for like 43. You know, just hasn't had a ton of high-level upside. Um... Philly, from a matchup standpoint, is third for me. So I'm I'm okay with Simmons. I think he's a three. I wouldn't have a problem having him. Uh, just you need to keep an eye on Embiid. If Embiid is out, it changes everything here. Uh, Saric, 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. Uh, to me, that's just too costly. Uh, he had 35 last night, and he gets into that area, but again... It's hard for me to see Sarge just going super ridiculously crazy. So I'm going to say that he's a four. Embiid, 10-4 on FanDuel, 9-7 on DK. Um, he had 49 last night in 24 minutes. Uh, you need him to get to 52, which he's done once in the past two weeks. But I, I really do like him in this scenario. I'm going to say that he's a two, but obviously you need to pay attention to whether or not he's going to be on the court. Robert Covington is 5,700 on FanDuel, uh, 5,600 on DK. Looking for 27. God, he's been so bad. Just so bad offensively. That's a good fit, though. Um, Clippers do give up threes. I'm going to say he's just a three. And uh, I'm not really that interested in Redick, but I will say he's a four just because of their proclivity for giving up threes. And, you know, revenge game, I guess. Check out the Clippers now. Um, Tay Dosich, questionable. Wow, Lou Williams price, no movement. Interesting. Now, this is a very tough matchup. Phillies D has been exceptional. Uh, I have them as the best team defense that's playing tonight from a fantasy perspective, which is kind of scary. So t keep that in mind. Um, you're going to really want to look for, for value here. Gallo at 6,700. Um, he had 29 last night. I'm not going to... I don't, I don't like the idea of going with Gallo tonight, especially having 
probably Covington on him. Um, so I'm going to ignore Gallo. Uh, I have to go back to Lou Williams on FanDuel. If he's 6,800, I have him playing 32 minutes. He played 31 last night, had 41.8 fantasy points, um, ended up being a, a great play. And uh, I have no reason to expect that to not continue. Uh, Lou Williams is a two for me on FanDuel. He's uh, very different on DraftKings. And by very different, I mean unplayable. He's uh, 8,000 on FanDuel. I can't. I can't justify that. You would need him to get to 40 just to hit 5x. That's going to take a lot of work. Um, not with all these new guys in there now. Tobias Harris is at 7,100. Uh, so you're looking 35. I don't see that as something feasible. Um, DeAndre, though, 7,300 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. Uh, you're looking 35, 36, somewhere in that area. I would have expected. I would expect him to like start playing you know, better as they get a little bit more feel just because they're deeper with like NBA talent. It's not just Tyrone Wallace and Jawan Evans and CJ Williams and what other dickheads were playing in like late December, early January. Um, but I don't really like it. I'll say DeAndre's a four. I'd rather have Embiid. Uh, no interest in Avery Bradley at 4,600. Uh, you know what? I'll say that Avery Bradley's a four. I like that shooting profile for him. He does live in the mid-range, so if they're going to give it up, maybe he can get hot. Not to mention, this is a showcase game for Avery Bradley. You know, I expect him to be in Philly next year. Austin Rivers. Uh, I fucking hate him. 4,500. Yeah, I guess he needs to be... He's just a four. It's too tough of a uh, defensive matchup. Let's go to the Bulls. Bulls. Uh, 104.5 implied total is uh, ninth. They're five and a half point underdogs at home against the Wizards. Um, I have the Bulls as the second worst matchup on the night. Uh, but they do have a lot of value on DK um, from a pricing perspective. So Justin Holiday is 5,800 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK, which is just bananas for someone that's playing uh, as many minutes as he is. Um, like I said, it's not a great team matchup, but sometimes price trumps that. Um, I'm going to say Justin Holiday is a 3 which I think is actually pretty good for today so far. You need him to get to uh, like 28 on FanDuel to hit value. Same thing to hit 6x on DK. Um, that's a pretty tasty price. Jerry and Grant, 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. He went for 40 last night. Um, I just could never get him to fit into the lineup, but uh, I did think that he was in a good spot. I'm going to say same thing for Jerry and Grant. He's a three. I think that this is going to be one of those scenarios where you build out your lineup and end up with, and you can end up filling in with whatever particular bull fits your position profile because they're all sort of values based on price instead of like uh, need. Um, no Levine tonight. He's going to be resting. I guess I buried the lead a little bit. So uh, Denzel Valentine should get a, a nice boost in minutes. I've got him at 31. Um, which, if that's the case, he's 4,900 on FanDuel. I can't overreact and say that he's a 2 because he's Denzel Valentine, but, um, you know, the last two times he played 30 minutes, uh, he had 30 and 36, which would be a uh, monster value for him. Um, I'm going to say he's a 3. He's more like a 2.5, uh, if that helps at all. Markinen is 6,700 on FanDuel. 6,300 on DK. He's a four. Uh, I just want him to get a little bit more integrated. And then the last guy we need to look at will be Portis. Uh, Portis is 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. Uh, only played 23 minutes last night, which was a little weird to me. Um, but he has the ability to put up, you know, high 40s. And at that salary, particularly, well, not particularly, at that salary, I like it a lot. Um, I'm going to, again, say that he's a three, but I would expect Bulls to be showing up. I just wouldn't focus on them. Wizards now. 
Uh, Wizards 110 implied total is fourth. They've got the second best matchup on the slate behind Denver. Um, this is a this should be a smash spot for um, for Washington. Unfortunately, Levine isn't playing. Um, I think Levine being on the floor is better for Bradley Beal because Levine is just dreadful on defense. But this is going to be a spot where you want some people. Um, keep an eye on news for Markeith Morris. Got a bum wing. Um, if he is out, you're going to want to fire up a heavy amount of Mike Scott or potentially, um, why can't I remember his name? Smith. Jason? Jason Smith. Whew. Generic ass name, man. Mike Scott, Jason Smith. Jesus. Got some generic ass people in Washington. Anyway. Beal is 9,300 on FanDuel, 9,000 on DK. I absolutely hate that price. Uh, he needs like 46 to hit value, which he hasn't really been doing. I mean, he has, but like, you want him to go crazy, and I'm going to hope that he does tonight. Uh, Bradley Beal is probably my favorite shooting guard tonight, which isn't much of a stretch, but I'm going to say that he's a two. I'm trying to be a little bit more aggressive with the guys that I like, and uh, Beal is one of those from a matchup standpoint. Let's see where he lands, because I assume it's pretty high. Um, Fantasy 5x5, five five, I think I've talked about it a little bit. Uh, Fantasy 5x5 five five has a, a... Where is it at? Do they know? Uh, they have, it's called Today's Best Spots. Oh, and he's number one. Um, so they use uh, positional DVP, the amount of like big and monster games that the other team gives up to that position. And if we check that out now, Bradley Beal is number one on that list. Um, and I would agree. Uh, I would I would want to have some Bradley Beal. This is a, as good a spot as he's going to get. Otto Porter, 7,400 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK. Uh, you'd be looking for 37. Had a big one last night. Um, sprinkled in a couple 40-point games recently with Wall out. No reason to think that that couldn't continue tonight. He's a 3 for me just because I'm prioritizing Beal. Let's take a look and see what goes with Beal. Markeith Morris, a little bit of Mike Scott. So, um, I'd be nervous to go Morris. I'm going to avoid, like, I like him on paper, but knowing that he's got a bum hand is kind of weird. Um, I'm going to say that he's a four, just because I don't trust it. But if you're going to take Beal and you wanted to have more exposure to Washington, I think that would probably be the spot. And then Kelly Olynyk is 4,600, which would be 23. Um, he's been all over the place, but in a GPP, I think the idea of having uh, Kelly Oubre isn't horrible. Also a four. But what you want to do is just pay attention to see if Marquise Morris is going to play or not. All right, Dallas we go. Um Mavs, 106.5 implied total. I have them as five-point favorites against the Lakers tonight. Their implied total would be fifth. I have Dallas as the fourth-best matchup tonight. Um, Lakers are pretty good against uh, guards and forwards, but, you know, we'll see how that goes. I don't expect Dougie McBuckets to get enough minutes to matter, so unfortunately we can ignore him. I'm assuming Harrison Barnes is back. And at 6,800, uh, he's a little interesting. You're looking for like 34, 35. Hadn't been playing very well uh, running up into this stretch of missing time. But, you know, against the Lakers, that's probably in one of those spots where he shines. Have they played it all this year? And, of course, everything that I'm saying might not matter if he doesn't play. Ah, nothing special against them. Okay, so he's just a four for me. Wes Matthews, 5,800 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. Uh, I don't want any part of him on DK, but I'm comfortable saying that he's a four on FanDuel. Dennis Smith, 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. Now, that's somebody I like a lot, actually. Um... <laughs> You have to assume that the Lakers are going to be playing Isaiah Thomas in a healthy amount of minutes, and he's fucking terrible. <laughs> uh, 
super, super, super bad right now. I have to look at it because we're talking about it. What has the Cavs' defensive rating been with Isaiah Thomas on the floor? Because it's not like the Lakers' defense is some uh, amazing lockdown group. Isaiah Thomas on the floor for the Cavs. Defensive rating, normally 112. Defensive rating of 120.8. That is a zero percentile. They've gotten outscored. They had a net rating of negative 16 with Isaiah Thomas on the floor. Holy shit. Load up on Dallas. Because if Isaiah Thomas has to play 30 minutes, dude is a turnstile. Uh, love Dennis Smith tonight. Um, I'm tempted to say he's a two. But I don't know. Uh, it's just... I don't love the price. He needs to get to 35, which he did do in his last game. I just don't know if he'd be the one that totally takes it over. You know what? I'm going to be aggressive with it. I'm going to say Dennis Smith is a two. Now, that's the assumption that Isaiah Thomas is set to play like a normal run. So if we hear anything different or that he's not starting or something, that might change. But if we assume Isaiah Thomas is playing 30 minutes, which is what I'm doing, fire up Dennis Smith because he is going to roast Isaiah's ass. <laughs> yeah. Actually, they'll probably put Isaiah on like Yogi Ferrell or something. Sons of bitches. Anyway, defense is going to be bad. You would think Dennis Smith can just attack at will. Oh, my God, that's so bad. What was the frequency for defense? Giving up a ton of shots at the rim. People just getting into the, into the paint whenever they want. Okay. Yogi Ferrell. 3,900 on FanDuel, 4,300 on DK. He's just kind of like perpetually a four. If you run out of options and you need to fit somebody in, it's fine. Sometimes he has a decent game, but I don't really like him. Dwight Powell, uh, 4,900 on DK. It's kind of interesting. I'm going to say that he's a four on DK. I don't want a terribly large amount of anything from Dallas, but it's whatever. Go to the Lakers. Lake Show, uh, 101.5 implied total, which would be 11th. They are the third worst matchup, in my opinion. Uh, Brandon Ingram at 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. So you're looking 35. Not a huge fan. Let's take a look. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not a big fan of Brandon Ingram. Which I wish I was. I am a Duke fan, so to speak. Uh, Ingram is just a four. And even that, I think, is a stretch. But I'll, I'd like to see how he interacts with Isaiah. Um, now, speaking of Isaiah, he's 6,800 on Fandle, which I don't really have an interest in. But he's 5,600 on DK. I can only assume he's going to get the opportunities. So I'm going to say that he's a DraftKings three. Um... You know, he can get to 28, I think. So it's worth a peek. I uh, don't have any interest in Josh Hart. Um, he's at 6,600. You would need 33. I realize that he's had four straight games in the 30s, but I'd like to see how, uh, you know, guys like Channing Fry and Isaiah are going to impact that. Julius Randle, 7,200 on FanDuel, 7,000 on DK. I mean, sure. It's he's a he's a four. It's nothing nothing interesting. Now I'm putting the four in Julius Randall's name. Now I'm spelling his name like he's a gamer. No thanks on KCP or Kuzma and Brooke Lopez. Why not? Four. Warriors. 113.75 implied total, 11 point favorites at home against the Spurs. It's really a shame that this game isn't what it's supposed to be. Let's do the usual, we'll grab all four since it's not like anybody's just going to be a terrible play. Um, not the best matchup, I think Draymond is probably my 
favorite of the group. Does anybody show up on the big games for the Warriors? No. Highest guy is Clay, so not really. Um, it's just not a spot where you're looking to like go crazy. Um, I'm gonna say, yeah, I'll say Clay a three, Durant a three, Draymond four, Curry four. Um, I don't feel the need to like go into prices or anything. These are all guys that everybody's already aware of. I would say that if I needed to prioritize anything, it would go Clay, Durant, Steph, Dr or Draymond, then Steph. Um, and the I would just prefer Giannis to Durant at small forward, which would make me probably lean towards Clay then at shooting guard. That's just my own construction. Spurs. Okay, so the Spurs are going to be a weird one. Um, DeJounte Murray is out. Tony Parker is out. So Patty Mills is, by all accounts, going to have to play like 30 minutes. But there's never, like, the Spurs just play all sorts of dudes. Like, it's just normal. So LaMarcus Aldridge, we'll start with him. 8,800 on FanDuel, 8,200 on DK. Uh, you're looking for 45. He's had two straight 50-point games. Um, granted, they were against the Suns and... Who was the other one? Uh, Suns and Jazz. Okay, that Jazz game's legit. Um, it's hard to really love that price. I'm going to say that he's a three. <sighs> Patty Mills. I just... He's 4,300 on FanDuel. He's 3,800 on DK. So... The price is obviously exceptional for a guy that, by all accounts, has to play 30 minutes. They're, they're running out of bodies. But he also doesn't put up stats. Um, needs... Uh, I'm going to say he's a three. I, I can't go crazy. He's probably going to pop up on optimizers like crazy. And if he fits, he fits. That's fine. But... I would prefer to find value elsewhere. Uh, Kyle Anderson, I hate him so much. I never get him right. Like this would be a situation where I would expect Kyle Anderson to have a better game because he sort of works as like a secondary ball handler or primary ball handler even. Um, so I'm gonna say that he's a three as well. Danny Green on FanDuel is probably a four. And, I mean, if you want to get super weird, I could see Ginobili being fun. I'll put him in as a four. I just, I don't know how to manage the Spurs. Like, how do you feel confident if Darren Hilliard or Derek White or Bryn Forbes or, you know, like these guys, Brandon Paul... One of these guys could play 38 minutes and we would never even see it coming. So it's hard sometimes. I'd rather just not play them. Let's get to the real game. Phoenix and Denver. Phoenix up first. Alfred Payton likely to make his debut. I'm pretty sure it, he is, but we'll see. You never know. Um, I haven't seen any official word, but I could have also just missed it. Uh... TJ Warren is 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. So you're looking for 35. Um, I love this for TJ Warren. I think this is a great spot for him. Um, I'm interested to see how he interacts with uh, with Alfred Payton. But I'm going to say TJ Warren is a three, and um, it wouldn't shock me to have him. Josh Jackson, 6,300 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. Um, I'm going to say that he's also a three. I just really like the matchup for, for Phoenix. Um, and if these guys are going to be getting 30 minutes like they've been, um, you know, it's pretty good. Josh Jackson needs 31. You know, he's had a couple straight games. You know, he had 24 in the last one, but 32, 31, 39. Guy can get there. Alfred Payton. This is the fun one for me. 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. So he needs 35. 
Um, I like it. I don't think that Denver's a very difficult matchup for him. It's a home game, so he would be making his debut. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he would want to do everything that he could. Uh, so I like Peyton. I, I like having pieces of this game. Last guy I really want to look at is Marquise Chris. M A R Q U E S E. Yeah. Uh, Five thousand on Fanduel, forty-four hundred on DK. He's priced just too low if he's going to be playing. I've got him for twenty-seven minutes. If he's going to be in that range, um, he needs to be a little bit higher. So he's a three for me. I wouldn't mind having two guys from the Suns and uh, at least one. But this is the one we want the most. Denver Nuggies. Number one team in matchup. Every sign points to the Nuggets tonight. Um, let's see where every. Let's make the opinions first and see where everybody ranks on the big game. Um, so first up is going to be Will Barton. Uh, Barton is seventy five hundred on Fanduel, sixty eight hundred on DK. So you're looking like thirty eight. Um, I don't see a ton of upside in that price, so I'm going to say that Barton is a three. Gary Harris, 6,700 in FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. That would be a spot where I would prefer Harris to Barton. Also just a three, but he's probably more like a two and a half. Um, Jamal Murray, 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Needs 35. Not the best game in his last time out, but can really get up there in points. Also, just a three. It's hard to see, like. Ah, there's just too much to like. But I'm comfortable saying this one, and I'm especially comfortable saying it because of last night. Uh, Nikola Jokic only played 22 minutes, which makes me happy on a potential back-to-back. -back. Uh, the Suns are god awful against centers, so. Uh, Jokic at 9,900, 9,300 on DK. Jokic is a two for me, straight across the board. I'm going to want to have Jokic as my center. That's my thing. Trey Lyles um, looks really good on DK, but I'm going to say that he's a three just regardless. So let's see who pops up on the big games. Denver, Denver, Denver. So Gary Harris is fifth. Wilson Chandler is seventh. No, thank you. Jamal Murray is 21st. Or Jokic at? Jokic, 43rd. They haven't given up many monster games, but I'm confident in Jokic tonight. So that's the quick run through. Obviously, I don't have the same energy today as I do on a during the week I just kind of want to go about my day <laughs> I've got some laundry to do gotta clean my garage you know fun stuff might go to bed bath and beyond I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna have time probably not gonna do any beer bongs though let's check out FanDuel that's 10 and go Try this again. Bam! A lot of Yogi Ferrell. A lot of Lou Will. A lot of Patty Mills. Ben Simmons. That one's interesting. And Abita. I renamed this tab. I don't even remember what it was. Oh, it was YouTube. I don't know how I'm going to manage Embiid and Jokic. I might have to play two lineups. Embiid and Jokic come up as my top two, so I'm just going to let that one shake out as it may. Um, if we go back here. So I'd like to look at Dennis Smith Jr. to start. And probably Lou Will... I don't think I'm going to be able to get to Giannis in that scenario, so this might be might take some creative uh, building tonight. 
you can get to Lou Will and Bradley Beal, but that means you got to go to Randall. There's too many good studs tonight. If I focus on Jokic and Dennis Smith and Lou Will, oh, we get going here. Dennis Smith, Farrell, Lou Will, Gary Harris, T.J. Warren, Denzel Valentine, Ben Simmons, Marquise, Chris, Jokic. It's something I can get behind. Let's check out DK. No live stream tonight, uh, no live stream tomorrow. I will be back on Monday with another live stream, and that will be the Josh Engelman birthday spectacular, which means really nothing. I'm just, it just happens to be my birthday. But I'm going to go live because I think it'll be fun. Going to eat some pizza. I'm going to eat some creme brulee and just enjoy myself. 50 lineups, DK, let's do it. Ah, I did it again, didn't I? Oh, nope, I guess those other uh, games aren't in here. So yeah, let's hop to my DK chart so I don't forget everything I just said. So Augustine for sure. And then Dennis Smith, no sign of him, just one lineup. So what does it look like? Yeah, can't go that way. I would have to force it in. So let's do Augustin. And then Giannis, Embiid, Jokic, and Bradley. So Jokic is there. Did I say Bradley? Oh, yeah. As in, like, first name Beal. Uh, so let's grab Jokic. No Embiid. What a Giannis. So let's see what we got here. Mills, Augustin, Giannis, Portis, Jokic, Kyle Anderson, Marquise Chris, TJ Warren. I'd entertain that. That wouldn't be horrible. Augustine, Jokic. Is Bradley Beal anywhere around? No sign of Beal. Trey Lyles. So stuff like that wouldn't be horrid. Jerry and Grant, Augustin, Holiday, Aldridge, Jokic, Ben Simmons, Marquise, Chris, Lyle. So that'd be one I'd entertain. All right. That's it for me, guys. Uh, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, Twitter, Patreon, Reddit, wherever you want to find me. I'll try to be there. Um, enjoy your weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.